Hello everyone, welcome to From the Star Wars Home Video Library. I'm your host, Nathan P. Butler. This time, we kick off a series of episodes here that are going to be looking first at some Star Wars parodies that got official home video releases, and then we're going to be looking at uh, a documentary. And it's just kind of an odd batch of items, many things that entered my collection thanks to Matt Fry that I just had not had time to research previously, some stuff that have come from other sources, but just basically things I just hadn't covered because, again, they are essentially parodies, or even fan-made parodies in some cases, but things that did get official releases. Um, so they sort of fit with some of the other stuff we've looked at. Uh, we are at the point where official Star Wars home video releases are few and far between as far as new releases go. Anything that I am able to share has to come from previous releases. I just pick up, perhaps, from maybe some other country or stuff that's just been sitting in my collection that I haven't had a chance to delve too much into because it was somewhat tangential. It's just where we are. Uh, this series is a little over 30 episodes away from hitting episode 500. I know exactly what episode 500 is going to cover. Stuff that's been sitting on my shelves for ages that I have not shown because I've been waiting for enough time to elapse to not feel weird showing them. Um, so, yeah. In the meantime, trying to get to 500, we are looking at some oddball items here. Uh, I do have another item that's coming from the UK sometime soon that'll be an official release for us to show uh, that's actually a box set of some stuff I've shown you the individual ones of uh, that Jim Pierce is helping me get my hands on here. But by and large, just not a lot of official stuff to show. And I'm not currently scrambling and buying up a bunch of that stuff because at the beginning of any year, usually that's when most of the funds are going towards meeting deductibles and out-of-pocket expenses for many medical things that we pay on pretty constantly here. Um, so, that said, we're going to kick off here with what is sort of thought of as like the grandpappy or great-great-great-great-grandpappy of Star Wars parodies. And it is one that is a legend for what it did, but at the same time is kind of weird and to me at least humor wise pretty much completely falls flat. It's never been one that I've heavily pursued because I've just never really gotten as much of a kick out of it as I guess some other people have. Um, but of course humor is subjective. I'm someone who really doesn't like watching sitcoms but I'll watch stand-up comedy all the time because that I really enjoy. So uh, I guess it just depends. And then satire, you know, all about the satire type stuff um, uh, or the uh, the satire with relevance. You know, give me Steve Hofstetter, give me Bill Maher, give me uh, John Stewart kind of stuff. Um, but when it comes to you know, comedy as just like, let's do a comedic show, it really needs to hit the right mark for me or it completely misses the mark. There's not a lot in between. And unfortunately, this is one that missed it for me, but I can recognize the brilliance of what it is as a production. You can probably guess by now, since I said great, 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 whatever, grandpappy, that we are talking about Hardware Wars. This is a parody from 1978 made while you couldn't watch A New Hope at Home by people who watched the films in theaters and then tried to recreate a lot of it at home as a parody using what was essentially hardware, like home appliances and such, like an iron for a Star Destroyer. Um, uh, the lightsaber is very creatively done in one particular scene where it's like a high power flashlight stepping back into some fog, some smoke, so it looks like there's a blade as it goes through. Um, I mean, it's a very creatively done thing. It actually reminds me a lot of the recent thing that we looked at here on the show, 52577, where before you're embarking on the whole getting obsessed with Star Wars aspect of it, a big part of it was wanting to get into filmmaking and the homemade movies that were being made by the main character, both in real life and in that film, and sort of how they may do with various implements around the house and whatnot to try to recreate movies that were uh, beloved. And this is sort of a take on that that has somewhat become classic for Star Wars because it was what we think of as one of the earliest fan films, fan-made parodies, and so on, and because it was a parody, it's actually gotten some official releases legally, um, including some that were incredibly early um, that you might not expect for a film like this. Just one year after the home video premiere of A New Hope in 1982 as a full version of the film rather than, you know, selected scenes on Super 8 or whatever, and the same year that we saw Return of the Jedi hit theaters, 1983, we saw a home video release of Hardware Wars. Pretty hard to come by in good condition. This is actually in quite good condition uh, until a tiny bit of the tape crinkled as I was taking it out of my VCR. Yikes. Um, but generally in good condition. Thankfully, that was the very beginning where there wouldn't actually be anything on the screen. 
Um, but this is from Warner Home Video. This is the company that would eventually evolve and evolve and evolve to become the version of Warner uh, that we saw releases for, uh, for things like Clone Wars and whatnot. So we have the logo up here, Warner Home Video, labeled as comedy. Yeah, it's comedy. Not my type of comedy, but comedy. Hardware Wars and other film farces. And then we have this labeling here. We will see this labeling again, or artwork, whatever you want to call it here. Uh, may the farce be with you. Down here at the bottom, it lists cast crew information here. Uh, this is a film created by Ernie Fossilius and produced by Michael Weiss. That will make a difference later on for one of these releases here. Oh, and then we do have a VHS as the format down here. I believe there was a beta version as well. I've seen beta versions on eBay, but they're usually like completely cut up like old rental versions. Uh, this actually, I believe, was a rental at one point as well, but I've managed to clean up some of the, the stuff that was on it. So we have the logo again, Warner Home Video Comedy, Hardware Wars. Doesn't say anything about the other stuff, so Hardware Wars is the big draw here. Uh, Warner, then the image there just kind of taken from the front. Then we have a color, 51 minutes and product number, and then VHS again. The back, we have shots here essentially uh, of the different films that are also on here. Then a lot of text, legalese, not rated, and so on at the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and read what's on here um, because I think that bears mentioning since this is a little bit tougher to find. We'll see how it evolves from release to release. So it says, a hilarious quartet of blockbuster movie satires. In today's movie business, the big hits keep getting bigger and bigger. And this was in the 80s when they were saying that. With spectacular special effects, nonstop action, million dollar salaries, and box office receipts that read like the national debt. <laughs> oh, that's so quaint where the national debt would have been. <clears throat> anyway, econ teacher shutting down. Uh, with success like this, can satire be far behind? Warner Home Video presents an irreverent, irrepressibly funny family of film farces. Going for that alliteration there, huh? That let the hot air out of Hollywood's hottest titles but they're also affectionate tributes to the movies they savage. And if you've seen the originals, you can't afford to miss these inspired send-ups. First comes Ernie Fasilius's award-winning Hardware Wars, a spectacular space saga of romance, rebellion, and household appliances. Featuring thoroughly forgettable characters, you can say that again, as Fluke Starbucker, Ham Salad, Augie Ben Doggy, Princess Android, and the lovable robots RT Deco and 4Q2. Hardware Wars may be the ultimate space odyssey. 2001 laughs guaranteed. Stay tuned for a wicked cinematic one-liner called Bambi Meets Godzilla, Marv Newland's 90-second animated mini-epic with labyrinthine introductory credits and a whiz-bang climax. Literally, it's a quick animated thing of Bambi eating and Godzilla's foot coming down and squashing it and killing it. The end. Hope I didn't spoil it for anybody who was really excited for Bambi Meets Godzilla. It's actually, you know, kind of straightforward, though, <laughs> when you think about it. Uh, let's see. Next comes Closet Cases of the Nerd Kind. Close Encounters of the Third Kind, of course, parody. A close encounter with stupidity on an interstellar scale. Director Rick Harper pokes fun at mashed potato mountains, flying pie pans, singing mailboxes, scientists with French accents, and a mysterious radio message from outer space that spells out the mathematical formula of pie, with results that have a delicious impact. Finally... A small masterpiece called Porklips Now. Apocalypse Now. It bites you upriver in Coppola country without a paddle. Ernie Ford Fossilius journeys towards the heart of darkness with a young alienated barbecue chef sent into Chinatown to terminate the career of Fred Madman Mertz, a flipped out butcher who's slashing meat prices to pennies per pound. May the farce be with you. Yikes. Okay. And you open it. And it is one of these old school Warner home video clamshells with like that, just that unique kind of plastic feel to them. And the embossed logo and stuff over here uh, does say uh, Warner Home Video, a Warner Communications company. This part, I've had to remove some stickers from the rental place, but Hardware Wars and other film farces here with the Warner thing. Front of the cassette, great uh, Be Kind Rewind thing up here. And then we have the Warner logo, Warner Home Video. Hardware Wars, and other film farces. Then it has your uh, FBI warning down here, and in the white there it has a uh, not rated color 51 minutes, uh, product number 1982, copyright for Warner Home Video Incorporated. Notice that is 1982. The copyright on here says 1983.
three on this right there. And it does still have the Warner Home Video non-returnable silver sticker down there at the end. So what's on here, it's basically just a quick FBI warning of the era, followed by the Warner Home Video logo and the uh, Pyramid, like films, whatever it is, logo. Uh, and then it just gets into the actual, you know, Hardware Wars from 1978. And uh, immediately after that just runs into those other parodies. So uh, the other parodies are there to add added value to this, as we will see with another of these parodies we look at soon on DVD, uh, George Lucas in Love. But it's one of those ones, it's kind of an oddball release, uh, just because it is an older release and interesting that Hardware Wars got a release at all this early in the process. I mean, this was, you know, we didn't even see Empire yet on home video. We didn't see Jedi on home video. And yet, just one year after A New Hope hits home video, there's the cash in with Warner saying, hey, let's put Hardware Wars out there and draw in some of those Star Wars fans. Fast forward to 1997. It's the 20th anniversary of Star Wars, uh, A New Hope hitting theaters. It is the year of the special editions, and here comes the second of the VHS releases, a more controversial one here for Hardware Wars. Hardware Wars Special Edition. New artwork here meant to, I guess, kind of evoke uh, you know, the look of the uh, uh, special edition Star Wars trilogy. The farce is back. Cast crew information with your not rated and all that kind of stuff down there. The Michael Weiss production logo here in the corner. Okay, On this side, Michael Weiss production logo and then a Michael Weiss production text. Hardware War Special Edition VHS and then THS 1134. It's like a product number looking thing, but it's meant to be kind of a parody, right? Not THX, but THS. The S being a dollar sign in this case. And then 1134 as opposed to 1138. Ha, 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 funny, funny. On the top, just the logo there. Uh, both sides effectively the same. And then the back, we've got that Star Destroyer looking thing here, which is actually an iron there in the background, the UPC Harbor War Special Edition. We'll look at the sticker in just a second. Um, some quotes that we'll look at, text about it and whatnot all the way through. Then some notes about how this is a special edition and a couple of screenshots from it. Yes, this is basically Hardware Wars from 78, taken to 97 with some CG-type uh, tweaks to the film for new special effects and whatnot, very much like what we would see with the original trilogy for the special editions. They actually went through a process like that, though not nearly as extensive, for freaking Hardware Wars. Again, to capitalize. Uh, color, approximately 20 minutes, design and illustration, blah, 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 copyright, so on, company logo again down there at the bottom here. Um, so what it says... First off, you've got this little warning here in the white circle. The warning says, this edition has been created without the approval or consent of Ernie Fossilius. Okay, so this is Michael Weiss, but not Fossilius. So it's sort of half of that original sort of dynamic duo creating this in the first place, who is putting together or spearheading the putting together of this special edition version. It made it a little controversial because it meant that the original creator who usually is thought of as the person behind this when it was really the two of them um, was just sort of left out in the dark on this whole thing. The quotes at the top, we have an ingenious parody from New York Times, delightfully batty by San Francisco Examiner, and the hottest short subject to hit the screen from Rolling Stone. The text about it says... The critics were raving about the hilarious parody of Star Wars, which was awarded, quote, the most popular short film of the year at the Chicago Film Festival. The year was 1977, and this little spoof became the highest grossing short film of all time. Not sure why it's saying 77. This, every date I've ever seen for Hardware War says 78. In particular, uh, October 16, day before my birthday, 1978, year before I was born. So, not entirely seeing where 77 comes into this, but... Maybe I'm, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe the sources I'm looking at here are wrong. Maybe the copyright dates on all of these are wrong. But the text says 77 and not referring to A New Hope, but referring specifically to Hardware Wars for some reason. Today, the farce is back. And just like its big screen cousin Star Wars, it too has been re-digitized, remastered, and re-released with over 20 new special defects, not effects, defects, and scenes by Los Angeles' leading computer graphic artists. This space saga of romance, rebellion, and household appliances features steam iron spaceships, flying toasters, Star Wars lookalikes, Fluke Starbucker, Ham Salad, Augie Ben Doggy, Princess Android, 4Q2, RT Deco, and Darth Nader. You'll laugh. You'll cry. You'll kiss three bucks goodbye. 
Get in line now. May the farce be with you. Who knew back in 1977 that the story of household appliances was about to become a cultural phenomenon? To the right, two scenes from the new special edition that it shows. Some new ships there near the end that, uh, I guess they're bottle openers, I think. Uh, bottle openers or can openers or something. And then uh, them on what is essentially their version of Tatooine with their escape pod, which is an ejecting cassette crash there in the background beside them. Uh, featuring over 20 new digital effects. It does say effects, not defects for that part. Uh, and then where you can order additional copies and stuff like that. Then the cassette itself, nothing here. Printed on label, as were many of the Star Wars releases of uh, the era coming up. Uh, we have, uh, let's see. Uh, it's kind of hard to see. We have the TH dollar sign 1134, color approximately 20 minutes, copyright information, uh, Michael Weiss production symbol, Harbor War Special Edition, and FBI stuff. And it would turn out this is the oddball among them. Uh, I did take some notes. My handwriting sucks because um, I don't tend to write much by hand anymore. Um, but I would note here that it's easy to tell which one you're about to watch because the 20th Century Foss logo at the beginning, instead of looking like it is... Uh, hand-drawn animated, uh, does look more dynamic, like a CG animated type of thing. Um, you do have, of course, the cassette launch. Uh, the title screen is different. Um, there's sort of just random stuff seemingly thrown in. There's star lines for hyperspace, and you actually see the ship flying through hyperspace. Um, there's not a lot of, of major change. Like I said, 20-ish, um, but they're all minor types of things. Um, what I did find interesting was that it is one of those ones where because I guess, and we'll see this with the DVDs as well, because you have a tendency when something is rescanned or restored or re-edited, there might be slight differences in the individual um, cuts. Um, when I do these as side-by-side -side comparisons, playing them at the same time simultaneously synced up, I'll see sometimes that the audio is staying the same, but the video is actually switching cuts from one shot to another at slightly different times, like sec uh, milliseconds perhaps apart. Um, enough so to know that some of these were recreated as opposed to it just being taken the original and playing around with it. Uh, it does also have a fun opening with a THX type thing, which is ZZZ instead of THX. Uh, the audience is tired of logos start the film already. They would have been great at CinemaSins, uh, so to speak there. Uh, otherwise, nothing special. No special features or anything like that. But this is the oddball release because it's the one that is this special edition tweaked version that seemingly has not found its way onto any subsequent releases on other more modern media. So if you're looking for Hardware War Special Edition, this is the one to try to find from 97 on VHS. There have been releases since then, though. I found two that have come through um, DVD, and I must say all of these releases have come through the generosity of Matt Fry, who donated a big chunk of his collection, or almost his entire collection, into mine a while back. I just haven't had a chance to get to them, as I did with a lot of the other stuff that came into my collection that way. So we pick up here with the first DVD release that I've managed to uh, kind of research to find here. As far as I know, these are all the releases, but let me know if there are others I've missed from the U.S. We have the Hardware Wars DVD here, the original, right? So we have Collector's Edition at the top, the original. And Hard Rewards, the same artwork that was on that original release back in 83. Cast crew information, DVD, Michael Weiss Productions logo. The farce is back. Okay, and this is from 2002 on DVD. So essentially the same uh, era in which we'd see releases for primarily Attack of the Clones. We also, of course, had some sort of late releases um, for Phantom Menace to sort of flesh out that product line at the same time that we've covered before here. Spine, we've got the Michael Weiss Productions logo, we've got the original Hardware Wars Collector's Edition, uh, then a quick shot of Princess Android, and then DVD there. Kind of hard to see because it's so dark on there. And then the back, we have the original Hardware Wars Collector's Edition, the UPC, uh, our little uh, kind of comments from reviewers, which is essentially the same thing that we saw back on the VHS, except it also includes gleefully, 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 not where that extra syllable came from, gleefully cheesy with Premiere Magazine, and then information about it, mostly about special features and whatnot. Uh, same you'll laugh, you'll cry thing that comes from the actual film itself there. Um, then your, you know, stats and whatnot. It is 5.1 ProLogic and Mono compatible. And then, uh, legally is down at the bottom. What the text actually says is, the farce is back. 
fully restored by its director and creator, Ernie Fossilius, with dozens of hilarious new features. This new one-hour DVD includes, and I should note here, note they're pointing out that Fossilius is back when he was not for this one, uh, even though there is some similarity between the d design here of the back, um, and the fact that it is, again, restored and remastered, which I'm assuming it means it was re-edited back together following the same template, which is why, again, it does not match exactly if you sit it side by side and do a comparison, but it's mostly in terms of, like, length of shots relative to other shots and how they overlap. Uh, but it says it includes the director's commentary like none you've ever heard. Just a director's commentary. Uh, the producer's comments. Uh, the producer's comments there are not like a commentary. It's basically an interview done at the 2001 Cannes Film Festival. A rare look at a pirated foreign version from 1979. Yes, I'm not sure what the language is that's used for it. I apologize. I'm not fluent in all the different languages to be able to pinpoint exactly what it's from. Um, it appears to be possibly South Asian, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, but it is entirely done in a different language, uh, audio-wise. An interview with Fossilius on the 1978 hit TV show Creature Features. Digitally restored soundtrack in the incredible Digi Redo 8.2 format. 5.1 sound on this thing. The never seen before, as opposed to never before seen, director's cut, which is like an unfinished, kind of weird version of this. Not super amusing, but okay. Antique Sideshow, which is an antique roadshow kind of parody. A prequel revealing the recent rediscovery of Hardware Wars. And that is actually kind of weird, kind of funny. It's basically like an antique roadshow. Hey, I found this. What's it worth? Kind of thing. Like a flea market type thing. Um, and the guy's like, you know, I believe this was actually made in the 60s. And did you know what? Just a few years later, Star Wars ripped off the entire thing and so on and so on, uh, where basically the case and the stickers that are on the case holding the film reel are more valuable than the film itself. Um, moderately interesting. I just, I do like that kind of amusing claim there. Uh, the shooting script and other original work by Ernie Fossilius and much more. Now, when it says much more, there's not a whole lot of stuff. There's an archives, which is a bunch of pictures. There's the Hollywood gift catalog, which is a bunch of pictures. There's credits and there's a button that looks like it's a button on the DVD menu that can't actually be clicked, which says detonate DVD. And that's basically it as far as that goes. Um, what it says about the actual film, the sprawling space saga of romance, rebellion, and household appliances features steam iron spaceships, the original flying toasters, and stars Fluke, Starbucker, Ham Salad, Augie Ben Doggy, Princess Android, 4Q2, Artie Deco, and Darth Nader. That is Darth, D-A-R-P-H. Oh, I apologize, I'm saying it as T-H, but it's Darth with a P-H here. As for the disc, it has the basketball, which is basically what Alderaan is in the film. Then your spaceship, uh, kind of police cruisery looking iron there. The original Hardware Wars Collector's Edition DVD and legalese at the bottom. I would note, by the way, that as soon as this makes the transition from VHS to DVD, the for lack of a better term, the Death Star plans briefing before the Battle of Yavin, or whatever you want to call this here, um, has been extended and has a lot more shots in it, a lot more just random techno babble type stuff in it, but it also does, for those who are going to be watching this with little kids, it does now contain an image of a naked woman as part of the Death Star plans for whatever reason they chose to include it. This says original, which makes me wonder if that was meant to be in the original and just couldn't make it past those who wanted to put it on uh, to home video previously, perhaps, but just suffice to say, just know that just in case um, you're going to watch it with kids. Then we have one more DVD release. That is this one here. Really like this cover here. Uh, this is from 2009. Okay. Uh, from Apprehensive Films. Okay. So we have, I mean, it's, it's an image that's meant to sort of evoke, you know, the classic Star Wars background, but it does have stuff that's more uh, kind of stylized, of course, sort of hardware wars, so to speak. Hardware wars. Uh, a spectacular space saga of romance, rebellion, and household appliances. I promise you won't have to keep hearing that phrase. We'll maybe hear it one or two more times. 30th anniversary special edition DVD, fully restored wires and strings. It's most of the stuff from the previous DVD, just in a new package here. Uh, apprehensive films. Um, I do like the fact that it's kind of like the fake $15 sticker. A cult Radio A Go Go logo here. There's actually an advertisement for that at the beginning of the DVD. A rental only type of sticker up here, kind of harkening back to Star Wars having the rental only version originally for A New Hope. Then over here, you've got the uh, symbol for Apprehensive Films, Hardware Wars. 
uh, what looks like the kind of thing you would see on a rental shelf, right, uh, to kind of help you find it on the shelf. Um, let's see, uh, midnight showing looking ticket stub, VHS looking thing, $4.99 sticker crossed out down there at the bottom. Again, just very creative the way they sort of try to recreate like the look of just like a trashed up rental copy of something. Uh, then we got like a ripped up part of an old package here. Looks like the cassette showing through. Um, barcode, Hardware Wars 30th Anniversary Collector's Edition, starring Scott Matthews, Bob Knickerbocker, Cindy Fergach, Jeff Hale, and the voice of Paul Fries, written and directed by Ernie Vasilius, although it's part of it's gone. Not rated running time and so on. Uh, special features listed here as if it's being torn away from the, again, this part's being torn away from the packaging here. Uh, we have tower record slash video, um, you know, rental kind of zap it in type thing here, barcode. Previously viewed 20th Century Foss apprehensive films. Special features listed include the original uncut film, same as the one that's on here. Digitally remastered, same as the one that's on here. Stereo soundtrack, same as the one that's on here. Newly unearthed director's cut, same. Unauthorized foreign remake, same. Director's commentary, same. Two creature feature interviews with TV host uh, Bob Wilkins, which are all just kind of combined together. Um, antique sideshow, fake prequel, yup. Fully restored wires and strings, yup. And much, much more, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's basically the exact same thing. Um, it has a cult radio, a go-go uh, advertisement at the beginning, but then the, the bonus features include the prequel, director's cut, foreign cut, um, uh, the uh, creature feature thing, the commentaries, uh, has trailers included. The trailers are new, but it's not really for this. There's um, uh, one trailer for this, but the other trailers are for Colony, Super Argo, uh, Gamera, Super Monster, and Hidden Elements of Cartoon Drawing. So not anything really directly related to Hardware Wars except for the one there. And then on the inside, Hardware Wars just zoomed in version of the art there with all the copyright stuff around the edges. So effectively the same as the one here from 2002, seven years earlier. It's just that this one has some of those still image galleries that this one does not. But this one has the cool red case and whatnot. So I'm assuming the red case is what it came in here. Um, so I must say, uh, if you want to see Hardware Wars, there's a lot of ways you could do it. Either of these is probably the best way to see the original at this point. If you want to see the special edition, this is the only way to see it that I have found, at least as far as physical media releases. Again, for me, I find that Hardware Wars, from the standpoint of how they had to have made it, the memory involved, um, the trying to find household stuff to make it work is incredibly impressive. Right? Very, very impressive. Uh, the attention that it got, very impressive. The groundbreaking nature of it in terms of sort of kicking off a fan film genre that wouldn't really blossom until like into the later 90s and so on. Um, really impressive stuff in that regard. Um, that said, the, the voice work bothers me a lot. Uh, the, the ADR type voice work stuff, because of course, you know, they go back, they re-record the audio after it's all mixed together um, to get a better sound quality, but most of the time it's not matching their mouths or only partially matching their mouths, which is really, really, just, it's, it's a pet peeve of mine. Uh, it's part of why um, I struggle watching anime a lot of times um, because of the way that the dubbing doesn't match the animation of the lips much of the time. In this case, it's, it's video uh, as opposed to, or like actual, like, you know, photographic video, whatever you want to call it, live action. Um, as for the humor in it, there are a couple of solid moments, but to me, again, for someone who doesn't tend to watch uh, stuff quite of this fair, it really misses the mark in most respects. Um, I mean, I feel like, I, I was trying to come up with a way to describe my feelings for this uh, as a parody, as a production. And maybe it's because I just finished watching HBO's Watchmen. Um, but it popped into my head that this really gives me a Rorschach from the Watchmen comic or film um, feeling, right? Where something's supposed to sound good, but when you read it, it comes off just as dull as the presentation in some respects. Like, crazy moment. Lots of hamming it up. People supposed to laugh. Ha ha, funny. Right? That kind of thing. Where, you know, if it turned out later on, it'd be like, they asked, would you recommend Hardware Wars? And I'll say, no. It just, it, 
it's that's the feel. I don't know how to give give word to encapsulate that, but that is how it feels. It feels like something where you read the script and you'd be like, really? Maybe it'll be funny on screen. And then you see it on screen, and you're like, nope, nope, not any better than when it was on script. But again, that is a matter of taste. Uh, we will find which ones I find some of the most funny ones at some points within this series, including the next one we're going to cover. Um, so again, maybe it's just a matter of taste. And certainly I am someone who is more geared towards certain types of comedy than others. So whether it's your cup of tea when it comes to humor or not, if you want to check out the classic Hardware Wars or add it into your Star Wars home video library, then again, you've got the 1983 release here, a little tougher to come by in good condition. You've got the 1997 one that is the only version of the special edition out there. And then you have the almost identical content of the versions from 2002 and 2009 on DVD, all of which are the original version, but again, remastered, so slightly out of sync with uh, the original that you might find here. Uh, with that, we'll wrap up this rather long episode of From the Star Wars Home Video Library. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching, and may the farce be with you.